Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Classic VW, and it is Friday, the Friday before Memorial Day weekend, a long weekend. I took off Friday too, so I can spend a little time with you guys and with Goose. We're about to go for a cruise, and I've got some new apps that I installed on my phone so you guys can see how fast I'm going and stuff because you're all curious about that. <laughs> Gotta get a rag first. How you can check the oil without a rag, man? You're not gonna check the oil. <laughs> Unless you're using your fingers, which uh, I guess you could do that. Oh, where's my rag box at? I got a box full of rags around here somewhere. So like I was saying, I'm sure that all of us kind of have our routines. One of the first things I like to check is, especially on a high powered engine, the general is a 2276. So I like to go ahead and check the the bracket that holds down my generator or alternator, whatever you got going on there. You can see that I've installed a little bit of a rubber um, isolator right here. Let me show you real quick. That rubber isolator right there. And what that has done, it stopped this thing from loosening up. It used to, just because of the force of the engine, that thing used to loosen up some. And once I put that rubber, uh, isolator in there it stopped it went away it no longer happens anymore and it's helped out quite a bit for the uh that sucker loosening up yeah it doesn't loosen up anymore so like i was saying first thing we want to check is the oil of course and one of the things uh i used to have was a an oil cooler underneath my fender and due to the fact that it was elevated some my oil level was always a little higher than what it actually is it's Whenever you start the engine, the oil starts circulating, and then it end up where it's supposed to be. But like right now, you'll take a look and see. I don't have that problem anymore. My oil reads as it should. There you go. So this is generally what I come in here and do with the general. Come and clean or clean the, the engine up pretty good. Then I'm just looking for stuff like loose hardware. Like I've had one of these bolts over the side here go loose one time. I'm just looking around the engine case too to see if I have any issues or problems that are starting to come up because this is a used older AS41 case and you, you just never know. You never know what's gonna happen or show up. And this is uh, this is my MagnaSpark 2 distributor which I have no complaints on. I guess some people have problems with them and uh, I've just, I've never had a problem with the Magnus Spark 2. You wanna take a look at your belt. If you can turn your belt like this, you're good to go. You wanna look for any kind of shining on your belt. Shining on your belt means it's spinning freely too much, which you're gonna have a little bit of free spin on your belt, but you don't wanna have too much. This is a CB Performance uh, generator pulley right here. And it's a, uh, it's worked out quite a bit better than the uh, chrome one that I used to have on here. All right, another thing that I like to take a look at is my fuel pump over here. Not my fuel pump, but my, uh, my fuel gauge that I have on the backpack here that tells me what pressure I'm working at. What I like to look at is my, my fittings and my lines. See if I see any leaks. And uh, you can look at that on my carburetors too. Back in the back on the dual 44 IDFs that I have. You want to look for leaks on your carbs. Which I don't have any. These a and fittings from Evil Energy have worked out great. And I don't have any leaks. One of the keys to keeping your air-cooled engine running great is to run it. For those of you guys that don't ever start these things up and you just go out and do cold starts all the time, that is the worst thing you can do for an air-cooled engine. You gotta drive them, guys. And I mean like, put a good hour or so on your engine. Because as they heat up, as these air-cooled engines heat up, it cleans out the block, cleans out the oil galleries, and uh, gets everything running better. I'm gonna have to pick up a, an older, older uh, spring. I guess back in the uh, early 50s, they had a different type of spring with a little less pressure. And I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but my tab right there broke. And I kind of had to re-weld it together. And I got some uh, 
some uh, corrosion inhibitor and uh, rust inhibitor kind of spread all over that right now to stop it from getting rusty, but Goose doesn't really see any rain, so I'm not too super worried about that. But uh, I'll be fixing that here pretty soon the rest of the way. And that's really it for the engine, guys. I checked the oil, check the belts, make sure nothing's loose, no hardware's loose. Take a look at the distributor, look for leaks, anything that would, would stand out before I go for a run. And of course, you'd want to fix anything that you find wrong, right? Yeah, she's always, uh, you know, got that big cam in there. It's always a little rough while she's warming up. I'll let you guys listen to her sing for a little bit. So one of the other things I want to take a look at is how the oil cooler is doing, the new oil cooler.
guys. I'm about to go for a ride and see how this uh, this works with telling you all the miles per hour and recording all that good info for you. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a trip, kind of see how she does. She's definitely warmed up good now. Hopefully it's not too bouncy, guys, the, uh, the image. So far it's pretty cool, telling you how fast I'm going. Seems pretty accurate. I'm gonna go over the bridge down here in Kima, give you an idea how she does on an incline and stuff. Memorial Day weekend. It's getting crazy out here already. And they have some car shows this weekend too. I gotta look around and see what's going on. Guys, right in the middle of the cruise, taking away for just a second. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the content, guys. If you love VWs, you love VWs like me, then don't forget to subscribe off to one of these sides. Yeah, and provide some comments, guys, below. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. And also, uh, in the description for this video, there is contact information if you want to email me or join one of the social media groups, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, which, you know, I don't do a whole lot of Twitter, but Instagram and Facebook, I'm always there. Now, back to video, guys.
Mr. Officer, whatever do you mean I was going how fast? You realize it's a Volkswagen Beetle, sir. Rancho Pro 
a video where I went over the gearing one time, and uh, don't forget, guys, that she's got the Kaffir bar installed, so wheel hop is minimal. I just felt a little bit, though. All right, guys, we're back from the run. Thought I'd give you an idea real quick where the temperatures are sitting on Goose, just so you can see it's hot. You see I'm sweating, right? So check out the temperatures real quick so you can see how hot she's running. Still touching, though. The little uh, microphone cover is MIA. I don't know where that went to, or when it went to where it went to. Oh. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. Uh, pretty cool cruising around, showing you guys kind of what the uh, the engines acting like, engine temperatures, give you a little bit more of an idea of the speed for uh, Goose and how she does traffic wise and stuff like that. So yeah, the 2276 performs well. These are like mildly ported heads. So there's not a whole lot of uh, porting that's happened there. So horsepower range, I have no idea. My guess is somewhere between maybe uh, 100 to 115 ish horsepower power. That's my guess. And that's, that's also probably kind of being conservative because I don't know. All right guys, well, hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy the holidays, spend time with your family and be safe out there. This is Jason with JW Classic VW and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.